The first national anti-TB drug survey was done in 2014 to 16 and it showed that uh, MDR TB cases were found to be 2.8 in new cases and 11.6 in the previously detected cases. And it also found that there were XDR TB patients of 1.3 percentage. In spite of all the treatment, the treatment success was only 46 percentage for MDR TB patients and 29 for XDR with a mortality of around 50 percentage. So it was very vital for the introduction of the newly drugs of TB. So there came the drugs like Delamanit and uh, Bidaculin. Welcome to my channel. I will be speaking on the topic of Delamanit classes, mechanism of action, pharmacokinetics, WHO recommendation, inclusion criteria and exclusion criteria. My name Dr. Mohammad Hafiz. Which class does it belong to? It belongs to the class of nitrodihydroimidazooxazoles. You can remember it as NDIO, which means New Delhi is old. Okay, as a mnemonic. NDIO, nitrodihydroimidazooxazoles. It is the first approved drug in this class and developed by the Otsuko Pharmaceuticals and it's approved for use in by the European Medicine Agency in November 2014 and by the RNDCP PMDT in 2017 on 14th of June. So what is the mechanism of action? It has dual mechanism. The first one is by blocking the synthesis of mycolic acid. A reactive intermediate metabolite is formed causing the inhibition of mycolic acid production and thereby the inhibiting the cell wall synthesis. The second action is by poisoning them with nitric oxide which the drug releases when metabolized. So it is a bactericidal drug and it is also a prodrug which is activated by the enzyme. Now coming to the route of administration, it comes as a 50 mg tablet and it is taken by orally along with food for the better absorption. Since it is taken along with other uh, anti-tuberculin and second line regimen, it is uh, it's not uh, advised to consume milk as calcium decreases absorption of cal uh, fluoroquinolone and large fatty meal is advised to be avoided as cycloserine efficacy is decreased. Now coming to the pharmacokinetic, you should know regarding absorption, distribution, metabolism and excretion. Absorption is bound, it is bound to plasma albumin 99 percentage and uh, metabolism it reaches the maximum concentration in 4 to 5 hours and elimination with a T half life of 36 hours and excreted in the stool. So it is uh, comparatively renal safe. Now, what are the WHO recommendations? See, delaminate is added to the MDR TB regimen in adult TB patients conditional upon uh, if the patient adheres to the treatment uh, longer MDR TB regimen and careful selection of the patient who are likely to benefit. The informed consent to be taken, close monitoring of the patient is required uh, and active drug. Uh, safety monitoring and management. So you can remember it as A, B, C, D. They should adhere to the treatment. Benefit should be the consent, close monitoring and drug safety. So when is it added? When added to a WHO recommended regimen? In patients with MDR TB, when an effective longer regimen with four second line drugs in addition to pyrazinamide cannot be designed or if there is resistance to fluoroquinolone or second line injectable drug and if there is higher risk of poor outcome like drug intolerance, contraindication and if the patient has extensive or advanced disease. It is not recommended to use delaminate in shorter regimen uh, by the WHO. What is the inclusion criteria under NTEP? It includes adolescents of 6 to 17 years of age as well as adults of more than 18 years including people living with HIV not eligible for shorter MDR TB regimen whose original regimen it cannot be composed due to reasons of resistance or tolerability. And the other included individuals are the MDR TB patients with resistance to any or all fluoroquinolone or any second line injectables. It includes individuals with XDR TB patients. The final group of patients includes a mixed pattern drug resistant TB patients. These individuals include who are uh, failing any DRTB regimen or who shows drug intolerance or contraindications 
and uh, who return after interruption or shows any exclusion criteria for shorter regimen and who are with extensive or advanced diseases. Special caution is to be considered when giving the delaminate containing regimen to these patients. These individuals include patients with diabetes, liver or hepatic impairment, immunocompromised individuals, age more than 65, albumin less than 2.8, alcohol or substance abuse, and severe renal impairment. You can remember it as diabetic liar. Diabetes, liver impairment, immunocompromised, age, alcohol, and renal impairment. So what are the additional consideration on using delaminate? The patients with controlled stable arrhythmia, they can be considered after cardiac review. The patients should be postmenopausal for the past two years. It's advised to stop all QTC prolonging drugs if the interval is more than 500 milliseconds. And electrolyte imbalances due to potassium, magnesium and calcium, they are to be corrected. Females, they should not be pregnant or should be using a birth control method. Delaminate film coated tablets, they also contain lactose and so caution to be taken when patients with rare hereditary problems of galactose intolerance. You can remember it as A, B, C, D, E, F, G. A, arrhythmia, postmenopausal, QTC prolonging drugs, electrolyte imbalance, females and galactose intolerance. So who are the individuals who are excluded? They are children under 6 years of age, pregnant and breastfeeding women and patients with QTC interval of more than 500 milliseconds, history of torsadis depoidis or ventricular arrhythmia and those individuals who have a hypersensitivity to the active substance or any of its excipients like lactose. So there are some special consideration when delaminate can be used unless the benefit outcomes the potential risk. Like those individuals who have cardiac risk factors, who are having extra pulmonary TB, and also caution to be exercised with baseline lab abnormalities. What are the cardiac risk factors we are talking about? These are those individuals with a history of symptomatic arrhythmia, bradycardia which is clinically relevant, QTC interval of more than 500 milliseconds, either due to congenital prolongation or due to any clinical conditions. Any predisposing cardiac condition leading to arrhythmia such as hypertension, left ventricular hypertrophy, congestive cardiac failure, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy. And those individuals taking drugs that prolong the QTC interval. I have made a separate video of it and the link will be shared in the description. And those individuals with electrolyte disturbances, particularly hypokalemia, hypocalcemia, hypomagnesemia. You can remember it as KMC. So in these individuals, if you are giving delaminate, ECG monitoring to be done throughout the treatment. However, those patients who have no risk factor, they uh, patients with normal ECG, they can, it's only done at baseline and at day 15 of treatment and then monthly. The other risk factor is those individuals with extra pulmonary TB. No absolute contraindication for use in extra pulmonary TB if benefits outcomes the potential harm. However, effectiveness of delaminate in CNS TB is not established. I'd be speaking on the dosage regimen and its adverse effects in the next video. Keep watching. Thank you.